Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So you had Fed member Lockhart last night coming out with an absolute gaffe apparently, basically saying that we're definitely gonna have a rate hike in April and then just an hour later he went, well actually maybe I was kind of wrong about that. You saw the dollar immediately shoot up and then drop back down again. Uh, and that's a very uncharacteristic uh, gaffe from, uh, from Lockhart, who's usually quite steadfast in the face of the cameras, but nevertheless, a, a slight blip there. Um, what we are kind of seeing is um, a lot of global equity market, well, the US market still managing to push up that level bit higher. It's very, very, very resilient at the moment. Other European and Asian markets are just kind of treading water at the moment. And what we actually saw was uh, Citibank have come out with a statement basically saying that it is the worst quarter uh, for earnings downgrades ever, global earnings downgrades ever in their history um, that, they've, that they've come across. So that gives you a bit of an idea. Margins for companies are definitely getting squeezed and um, there isn't going to be any kind of super earnings cycle to propel these markets up that little bit higher. So that's going to give you a bit of an idea. There's not a lot of fresh money coming in to the market right now. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the movements that we're seeing higher, especially like in, in crude oil and some other global equity markets, might be coming out of people actually closing out their short interest positions. Um, so as people that were short, just going, you know what, it's time, it's time to get out, take some money off the table. And that's what's causing these markets to slightly eke out these gains. Maybe not the US market, incidentally, but when you look at gold, uh, not gold, but crude, sorry, um, that's where you're, you're, you're maybe getting your bits of growth from. It's not that there's a, a huge massive turnaround in, uh, in, in demand or any difference in storage or how much of a glut that we've got. It's just simply people are closing out of those short positions wondering what to do next. And that's pretty much the theme, the theme that's kicking around right now. Um, the volatility aspects of many markets are, are really kind of drifting that a little bit lower. Um, there's not as many opportunities as there was if things are just slowly trading up. Obviously, it's better for, for traders to have a little bit more volatility and uh, maybe we'll get it after, if we get some surprises on the macro data side as well. Big question marks over the Chinese yuan. Um, rumors of uh, secret manipulation by the Chinese government um, because the yuan has actually been very uncharacteristically stable at the moment, which is probably helping to calm things uh, as well. So that gives you a bit of an idea as to the common fundamentals. Let's go ahead and have a look at things from a technical perspective. So as ever, let's start off with the US there. So you can see how far we've come since we had that double bottom. So extending past the potential target price of that, edging closer to potential resistance at 79.79. Slow stochastic, massively overbought. All my oscillator on the on the, just slightly ticking over, and we're still in positive. We've still got positive momentum on the MACD. 87% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. They're just waiting for this thing to fall over. But what might typically happen is it's gonna grind on higher and higher and higher. And it's not until you really get to 79, 79 that you're coming up close to a, a strong resistance. But obviously one set of really dodgy micro data and this thing could tumble over because it is slightly overextended. So I can kind of see why, why clients are taking a short view at the moment. So having a look at the UK 100, you get a bit of an idea how much this is kind of stalled. The tips of these candles are indicative of selling pressure. The UK 100 is just kind of dying right now. Uh, sputtering, I should say, not dying. And uh, it's just crossed, the, the slow stochastic has just crossed over that 80% level. All my oscillators not doing anything. We do pretty much have a crossover on the MACD. 35% of CMC market clients are currently short. It's in the middle of two ranges, potentially provided a little bit of support for that 21 period SMA. Moving on to Japan 225, also with a 55% a long position, not really doing a huge amount as well. You can just see the outperformance on that US 30 relative to the other markets when you can see just how far these guys are away from their from their uh, kind of recent highs last year. Um, looks to be 17.896 as a strategic level. We're probably gonna oscillate around here for a little while. The other technicals aren't really doing a huge amount. We've almost got a crossover the MACD uh, and the slow stochastic did cross over the 80% level, but that was a few sessions ago. Looking at dollar yen, uh, it's kind of had a slight rebound. I don't think dollar yen really gets that exciting until we break uh, down below 110. Um, and it just depends on uh, what any Fed members really come out with some crazy statements again, and then completely backtrack just an hour later. So uh, that will give you a little bit of an idea what to expect. Um, you, would have, you would have hoped that if we broke out this triangle formation, we would have gotten more of a breakout, but uh, it, it does appear that it's not gonna do a huge amount extra uh, at the moment, 64% of CMC Marks clients currently long, hoping for a bounce higher. Moving on to crude oil West Texas, 66% of CMC Marks clients are currently short. We're getting quite close to uh, $40 again, psychological round number. 
Um, again, it's had a decent move, but as we discussed earlier on, is it because of any massive changes of the fundamentals? Yeah, there's secret meetings in Doha. Well, not really secret meetings, everybody knows about it, but there are meetings in Doha between OPEC and non-OPEC members. There is talks of caps of production, but caps of production at record all-time levels that's something to be quite, uh, something to consider. Uh, so is m most of this a short squeeze, people closing out of short positions, or is it actually people thinking that uh, crude oil is going to be getting a little bit of a shot in the arm? That remains to be seen, so just be careful out there. And then if we move on to gold, gold's just been a really tough one to read. Uh, with everything that's kind of coming out in the markets at the moment, uh, you expect gold to really break out in one direction or the other. other. When we broke out the symmet symmetrical triangle formation, we did initially have that big spike up, but now it's just, flopping around, it's not really doing a huge amount, but 78% uh, of seems most clients are currently long. They are pro possibly anticipating a move up to 1307, but it's not materialized as of yet. And then if we move on to uh, Euro dollar and GBP USD to close things off, uh, Euro dollar failed to break through potential resistance. Um, we had a negative day yesterday, negative day on, on the Friday. It's not doing a huge amount today. 65% of seems market clients are currently short. And then finishing up with GBP USD, uh, it's just running out a little bit, running out of steam, but we are at one spot, 43.52, which could be a potential support level, uh, which could be uh, interesting in the short term. That would also coincide quite nicely with the 55 period SMA. And we finish up with the market calendar as ever. What is coming today? Well, we do actually have uh, uh, an amount of uh, market serve PMI data for Germany, the Eurozone, and of course we've got and, and CPI for the UK. And of course we've got the ZEW business report for Germany, very important. And then you've got home sales and petroleum data on Wednesday. Thursday you've got retail sales, durable goods, employment claims, and Japanese data. And there on Friday, and uh, we're obviously in holiday in the UK, but as GDP coming out of the US as well. Well, that's it for me, guys. Very good luck with your trading, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, and goodbye.